Hello everyone, welcome to System Software and Compilers Module 3 lecture video. In this lecture, we will solve some uh, exercise problems on uh, construction of uh, predictive parsing table or LL1 parsing table. Let us consider the first uh, problem. Uh, The given grammar is yes, there is a x y b x derives c or epsilon y derives d or epsilon. For this grammar, construct the LL1 parsing table, that is uh, predictive parsing table. To construct a predictive parsing table, first we need to find out the first and follow set for all the non-terminals of the grammar. So, first of yes, first of yes is equal to so here a is the terminal symbol that uh, that can be derived as the first symbol from yes so a is present in the first of yes next first of x so first of x so x derives c or epsilon so these two symbols are present in first of x so c and epsilon c and epsilon then uh, first of y first of y first of y is equals d or epsilon so these two symbols are present in these two symbols are present in first of y. Now we will find out the follow set of the non terminals. So follow of yes, follow of yes equals. So S yes is the starting symbol of the grammar, hence dollar is present in the follow of S. Yes. Then follow of X. Follow of X. So if we consider this production and x at this position and y the non-terminal is following x so d it means the terminal d is following x so d comes into the follow of x and uh, if y goes off by the substitution of epsilon then then the follow of x contains b as uh, if y goes off by the substitution of y derives epsilon then uh, follow of y follow of y the terminal symbol b is following y hence b is present in follow of y so now the first and follow sets for all the non terminals have been computed and now we need to construct the parse table so the parse table 
contains the row wise the non terminals and column wise the terminal symbols the row wise we have got the non terminals s x y and column wise we have got the terminal symbols a b c d and dollar so here to get uh, the to get uh, uh, the passing table we need to make an entry of the productions into the passing table so now first we need to consider the first sets so if we consider the first sets so first of s equals a so to get this a symbol which production must be used so that is s derives a x y b so to get this terminal symbol a we need to use the production s derives a x y b and uh, a is over the first uh, set for s is over now first set for x to get the symbol terminal symbol c which production must be used so we need to make an entry of the production x derives c in the column c so that becomes x derives c and uh, epsilon when we have a epsilon then we need to shift for the follow set so we need to make an entry in these uh, columns also for the symbols which are present in the follow set we need to make an entry so d and b so to get a d from uh, x to get a d from x we need to use the production x derives epsilon so x derives epsilon then uh, in the to get the symbol b we need to use again the production x derives epsilon and then coming to y so first of y contains d so to get a d from y we have to use the production y derives d and then epsilon is there so we need to shift for the follow set of y and we need to make an entry in the b column for the row y so to get a b the another alternative in the y production is y derives epsilon so y derives epsilon must be entered in the b column for the row y so this is the this is the this is the passing table for the given grammar let us consider the another example to construct a passing ll1 passing table or predictive passing table the gra grammar is s derives s derives a a a b or s derives b b or a derives epsilon and b derives epsilon so now to construct the 
predictive parsing table first we need to have a first and follow sets so let us construct the first sets first of a is equal to epsilon first of b is equal to epsilon because uh, both a and b can derive uh, only epsilon so epsilons are present in the first set of a and b so now let us uh, write the first set for yes first set of yes is equal to so yes is having two productions one is yes derives a a a b or yes derives b b so here a can derive the non-terminal a in the first production can derive epsilon if it derives epsilon then uh, we will get the terminal symbol a in the same way if we use the second production if uh, this b goes off with the help of uh, the production b derives epsilon then we will get uh, the small b as the first symbol from yes so both the symbols a and b are present in the first set of s so now we will write uh, the follow sets for the non terminals follow of follow of yes so follow of yes yes being the starting symbol of the grammar so always we need to include a dollar symbol in the follow of yes then on the right hand side we are not getting any yes so the follow set of yes completes here now follow set of a follow set of a the non terminal a so here uh, here we have got a right the terminal symbol a is following a and also here in the first production b is following a so we have got the symbols both a and b in the follow of a and uh, coming to the follow set of uh, follow set of uh, the non terminal b here so in the second production we have got the non terminal b and the terminal symbol b is following the non terminal b so hence b is present in the follow set of b so these are the first and follow sets of the non terminals of the grammar now let us construct the passing table so the in the ll1 passing table row wise we have to write the non terminals column wise we need to write the terminal symbols so first yes then a then b row wise these are the non terminals and now we will write the terminal symbols a b and the dollar so which is a end one so now first we will use uh, first of yes so uh, to make a entry in the row yes we need to use the first set of yes both a and b right uh, a and b to get these i need to make an entry in these columns those are a and b so here to get a to get the terminal symbol a i need to use the production yes derives a a a b then to get uh, the terminal symbol b as a first symbol we need to use the second production yes derives b b so we need to make an entry yes derives b b 
Now coming to first of A. So when we come to the first of A, we have got epsilon. When we have a epsilon in the first set, then we need to make an entry in that particular uh, row for the follow set uh, symbols also. So the shifting to the follow set of A, we have got A and B. So here we need to make an entry in these two columns for A and B with the production A derives epsilon. So for the non-terminal A in the column terminal symbol A we need to make an entry A derives epsilon and also we need to make an entry for B A derives epsilon. Then Coming to the first set of B, again the first set of B contains a epsilon, so here we need to shift for the follow set symbols. So in the follow set of uh, B, we have got the terminal symbol B. So we need to make an entry in the B column with the production B derives epsilon so this is the ll1 passing table so and we can uh, here justify that the passing table doesn't contains any multiple entries hence this grammar is ll1 so that justification can also be given by this method by constructing a passing table we can justify when we construct a passing table if the passing table contains the multiple entries in a single location then the grammar is not ll1 if the if there are a single entries in the passing table just like this then the grammar is LL1. Let us take uh, the next example. Consider the grammar S derives opening square bracket S AX closing square bracket or A X derives X derives epsilon or plus yes y or y b y derives epsilon or minus yes x c so this is the given grammar now first uh, let us uh, construct uh, the first and uh, follow sets for all the non-terminals. The non-terminals uh, in this grammar are S, X, Y. S, X and Y. The terminal symbols in this grammar are uh, opening square bracket, closing square bracket, then uh, plus B, minus and c these are the terminal symbols so now first uh, we will construct uh, the first set first set for all the non-terminals so okay so first uh, let us consider the non-terminal es so yes is having the two alternatives so the first is from the first alternative of the production we, we, we can get the opening square bracket opening square bracket as a first symbol so that opening square bracket is in first of yes then in the second alternative a is the terminal symbol so that uh, 
a is also present in the first of s the next one let us take the non terminal x so x production is having a three alternatives the first alternative is epsilon so epsilon is present in first of uh, x then if we consider the second alternative then uh, here the first symbol that is derived is plus so plus c is also included in first of x in the third alternative we have the non terminal y so y is a non terminal and this y can derive epsilon or minus so in the first set in the first set of x we have we have epsilon and minus so minus we need to make an entry in the first set of x and uh, already we have included a epsilon in the first set of x so no need to uh, enter the epsilon again and also if we consider the third alternative of the production x then here if y goes off by the substitution of the production y derives epsilon then x can derive b small b as a first symbol so that small b the terminal b is also in first of x coming to the y first set of y we have epsilon in the first alternative and uh, in the second alternative we can get the terminal symbol minus so these two symbols are present in first sets of y so now we will write the follow set of the non terminals so s is the starting symbol of the grammar hence we need to add dollar symbol in the follow set of s and if we consider the first uh, production or a first alternative of the production from s then x is following s so whatever we have in the first set of x those symbols are following s hence we can get first set of x as plus minus and b epsilon cannot be written into the follow sets so if this x goes off by the substitution of x derives epsilon then closing square bracket will be following yes so the closing square bracket is also present in the follow set of follow set of yes and uh, if we see the last production then small c that is a terminal c is following x so this terminal c symbol is also present in follow of s coming to the non terminal x follow set of x contains here in the first production the closing square bracket is following x so closing square bracket is following x and that symbol is present in follow set of x and uh, c if we consider the y derives minus x c c is following x hence c is also included in the follow set of x 
Now considering the non-terminal y, so here in the second production we have got x derives x derives plus x y. So y is at the end. Hence follow of y is equal to follow of x. So the closing parenthesis and the terminal symbol C are present in follow set of Y. And also if we consider the another alternative of the same production, here the terminal B is following Y. Hence that B is also present in the follow set of follow set of Y. So now we need to construct the parsing table so ll1 parsing table or a predictive parsing table contains row wise the non terminals and column wise the terminal symbols so s x and y so the terminal symbols in the grammar are a B, C, plus, minus, opening square bracket, closing square bracket, and dollar. So now we will make an entry for the non-terminal yes. So now we will consider the first set of yes. So to get the symbol square bracket, we can use the production yes derives square bracket yes x. So here to get a square bracket in the square bracket column we need to use the production s derives s x then the terminal symbol a to get uh, the terminal symbol a we have to use the production s derives a and that must be written in the column a then coming to the first set of x so first set of x contains epsilon plus minus b now when we have a epsilon in the first set we need to make an entry in the table for the follow set symbols also so now let us consider the symbols from first set so plus to get a plus we need to use the production x derives plus s y and minus to get the minus to get the minus we need to use the production x derives y b so in the minus column we need to make an entry x derives y b because y can derive minus x c so if we choose x derives y b then we can get my, the terminal minus then b to get the b symbol from x again we need to use the same production x derives y b so x derives y b now the first set symbols are over now shifting to the follow set of x we have got a closing parenthesis and c the terminal c so 
to get the closing parenthesis or the terminal symbol c we have to use the production x derives epsilon so x derives epsilon must be written in the column c and in the column closing parenthesis then now uh, we have the non terminal y so here y derives uh, first of uh, y contains uh, epsilon and minus so when we have a epsilon again we need to shift for or uh, again we need to make an entry for the symbols present in the follow set also so uh, considering the first set symbols to get a minus we have to use the production y derives minus s x c so that production must be entered in the column minus then uh, closing square bracket to get a closing square bracket we need to use y derives epsilon because this is the another alternative in the y production but we if we use minus s x c production then we will be getting minus to get other symbols we have to use y derives epsilon only so the next symbol terminal symbol is c so again in the c column for the y row we need to make an entry y derives epsilon in the same way for the b column also we have to make an entry y derives epsilon so this is the ll1 passing table for the given grammar let us take uh, one more example consider the following grammar and construct first and follow sets for the non terminals and then construct its ll1 parsing table and justify whether the grammar is ll1 or not so the grammar is s derives t s or square bracket yes followed by yes or closing parenthesis yes or epsilon another production is t derives x x derives T X or X this is X or epsilon. So first we need to construct the first and follow sets, then we need to construct the passing table and then we need to justify whether the grammar is LL1 or not so let us consider uh, let us construct uh, the first and uh, follow set for all the non terminals so first and follow so the non terminals here are yes t and uh, x the terminal symbols are the opening square bracket closing square bracket closing parenthesis and opening parenthesis closing parenthesis only uh, the terminal symbols uh, are uh, opening square bracket closing square bracket opening parenthesis and closing parenthesis so first of yes so let us consider the first production 
S derives to S or S derives uh, the square bracket S followed by S or closing parenthesis S or epsilon. So here if we consider the first alternative we can get the non-terminal T. So from T we can get the opening parenthesis. So opening parenthesis is present in first of S. Considering the second alternative we can get the opening square bracket. Considering the third alternative in the first production, we will get the closing parenthesis. Then epsilon. These are the first set symbols for the non-terminal yes. First set of T T from T we can get the opening parenthesis. So only the opening parenthesis is present in first of T. Coming to EX, for the non-terminal EX, we have got again a three alternatives. The first, uh, in the first alternative, uh, we are getting the non-terminal T. So this non-terminal T can derive the opening parenthesis. So opening parenthesis is present in first of x then in the second alternative we will get the opening square bracket then in the third alternative we will get the epsilon so these are the first set uh, symbols for all the non terminals now we will construct the follow set for the non terminals so let us consider the non-terminal yes. So yes is the starting symbol of the grammar. Hence, dollar is present in the follow set of yes. Then, if we consider the second alternative here, closing square bracket is following yes. Hence, closing square bracket is present in follow set of yes. The next non-terminal is T. So here the if we see the first production and uh, in the first production if we consider the first uh, alternative then uh, S can become S can become epsilon with the substitution by the production S derives epsilon. So T becomes at the end. Hence follow of t is equal to follow of s yes. so dollar and closing parenthesis are already present in the follow set then uh, follow set of uh, t follow set of t here this follow s yes is following t hence the symbols present in the first set of s yes. These symbols are following the non-terminal T. Hence, we are having the symbols from first of S as opening parenthesis, opening square bracket and closing square bracket. Closing square bracket, sorry, uh, closing parenthesis. So, closing parenthesis must be added. So, the follow set of T contains opening parenthesis, closing parenthesis, opening square bracket, closing square bracket and dollar. These are the symbols present in the first uh, follow set of T. So now coming to follow set of X. So on the right hand side if we see the non-terminal X is present in the second production so closing parenthesis is following x so closing parenthesis is present in follow of x if we consider the next production 
then closing square bracket is following x hence hence closing square bracket is present in follow of x so now we have constructed the first and uh, follow sets so now consider let us construct the passing table so passing table contains the non terminals row wise so yes t and x now let us write the terminal symbols column wise so opening parenthesis opening square bracket closing parenthesis and closing square bracket and dollar now we we need to consider the first set symbols and we need to make an entry so let us consider the non terminal yes and uh, first set of s contains opening parenthesis opening square bracket closing parenthesis and epsilon so for the opening parenthesis to get a opening parenthesis from yes we need to use the production yes derives t yes then to get a opening a square bracket we have to use the production yes derives square bracket yes followed by yes to get a closing uh, parenthesis from yes we have to use the production yes derives closing parenthesis yes and uh, we have a epsilon in the first set of yes so we need to use the symbols present in the follow set also to make an entry in the parsing table so dollar and closing parenthesis to get a dollar and closing parenthesis yes derives epsilon must be entered into the parsing table in the columns closing parenthesis and dollar so now coming to the non terminal t first set contains only the opening parenthesis so to get opening parenthesis from t we have to use the production t derives x now coming to the non terminal x so the non terminal x contains opening parenthesis opening square bracket and epsilon so from x to get a opening parenthesis we have to use the production x derives t x and uh, to get a square bracket we need to use the production x derives x x then epsilon is there so when we have a epsilon we need to shift for follow sets so in the follow sets we have to see the symbols uh, the symbols are uh, closing parenthesis and closing square bracket so to get a closing parenthesis we need to use the production x derives epsilon and to get a closing square bracket again we need to use x derives epsilon so this is the passing table for the given grammar that is a predictive passing table or we can call this as a ll1 passing table and the question was to justify whether the grammar is ll1 or not so yes the answer is yes because the grammar is uh, ll1 because uh, 
every cell in the passing table uh, has uh, at most uh, one entry only hence the grammar is ll1 grammar